Hello YouTube land, it's Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter. Today is Sunday, July 23rd. Pardon the appearance, it's summer and we live at the lake, so I've been in and out of the water all the time. As soon as I get hot, jump in the lake, right? So anyway, it's been a lot, a great summer so far. I've been having lots of fun and uh, not as much crafting time as I'd like, so it's only having the evenings a little bit of time. But I did get some stuff done and I wanted to show you. Uh, I am still working on some big stuff, but only a little bit at a time. Uh, what have I been up to? I think I mentioned the last time that my daughter sent me a picture of a bag, a crocheted bag that she wants. I'm going to show you the bag. Come on, focus. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's a crocheted bag. Um, now I didn't want to buy yarn for it, so I just used the colors that I had. Um, she asked for that, and if you take a look here, there is no boxed bottom, so I made it that way. But I actually, I, st I started making it, and I counted how many rows, but I had no idea what this was, you know, what size hook or anything, so I guessed. And I made a bunch of squares, and they were, they turned, when I started putting them together, it turned out to be too big. I ended up making it anyway, but I'm going to show you that in a minute. So I started from scratch again using the same colors, and I created this. It's, see, no box bottom. Now, if it was me, I would have made another row of uh, granny squares all the way around to make it a box bottom. But that's not what the picture was, so I'm assuming that's what she wanted. Anyway, these are all just cottons, and um, like I said, I did not have the colors exactly, but I think it came out pretty good, and I even lined it. I had some granny square fabric, I don't know if you guys can see that. I lined it so that, you know, if she decides to use it for shopping or anything, it doesn't stretch the bag out like crazy. So, um, and then I just made um, some... Um, what do you call these fans for the handles so I made that I think she'll like it um, it's very close to the picture I had that you know that's all I had to go with so I made that now the squares that I made that were too big I did make it into a bag I decided after I finished I just put those squares away and then I finished this one and uh, they like to go to the beach so I made her a beach bag. I did not line this because I don't think you need that for a beach bag. Uh, it, but it's much bigger. Hold on, I'll show you. Much bigger than, yeah, so hold on. Not like that. Much bigger than the other one. So she'll have a grocery bag and... Uh, one for the beach and like I said I did not line it because you want the holes you're just gonna carry sandwiches or sandwiches towels sandwiches maybe they do carry sandwiches I don't know and then as far as the handle I just made a thick crocheted a thick band and sewed it on and so anyway she'll have one for everyday use and a massive one for uh, for the beach now this one I did add a panel so it's technically box bottom so I did all the blocks and then I just uh, added a panel all the way around um, to give her a little more room since it's going to be a beach bag so yeah did that that was time consuming uh, most of the time I love granny squares don't get me wrong I hate sewing in ends especially when you're doing all these different colors Eek, that was the most time consuming so I got two bags for my daughter, and uh, I think she'll be pleased. So, uh, yeah, I got that done, but I'm glad it's done. And then her partner loves my dish dishcloths. So I decided to, you know, in between, you need a palate cleanser every once in a while. So these, these take me about an hour, an hour and a half to make, so I figured, why not? Uh, and these are the... Granny's favorite dishcloth and her knit, and I just used scraps. So, um, whatever cotton I could find, I made the, I knitted the dishcloths. This one I made a little bigger, 
uh, and these ones are, you know, that standard dishcloth size. The only thing I don't like about these is, so they're done actually, you're knitting them from the corner and you're going out sort of like a CTC and crochet. Uh, you start at the bottom and go out and then you start to decrease and that decrease corner always ends up pointier than the other ones. The, and I must be doing something wrong, but I've made these before and they always turn out that way. So maybe what I'll do next time is to kind of deceive the recipient is make a loop, right? To make it look like it's supposed to hang that way. Because if you look at it now, it just looks like a pointier corner than the others. Anyway, so these are made with just scrap cotton, uh, these ones. And then I wanted to, because he loves his dish dishcloths. I don't know why he's always, if you got time, make me some more. Anyway, um, and when I went to, when I went to visit them last year, he had a drawer full of my dishcloths. <laughs> he uses them for everything. Uh, then I wanted to practice. I am doing the mosaic overlay mosaic blanket. Uh, I haven't put a lot of effort into that because um, I need to follow a chart and uh, I haven't had the mental capacity to do it. But I found this mosaic heart trivet. It's a free. Uh, Ravelry download and I'll leave the link for it. I'll leave the link for the grandma's favorite dishcloth, but it is knit. This one is crochet and it's um, Mosaic Heart Trivet by by On Needles and Hooks. Now, the reason I, I did this was one, it's cute. My daughter's born on Valentine's Day, so it's really appropriate. And it's her husband or partner that loves it. Um, but it is a trivet, so that's, she just left all of the ends as fringe. I wanted to make a dishcloth, so I did the envelope border, and obviously I need to practice. So I followed a couple of tutorials where you have to slip stitch around so that it gives you a base to do your double crochet envelope. And they all suggest to do a different color than what this, uh, the main color is. But then you get this, right? So I'm not too, too pleased with that. So the next one, I'm just going to make a dish. Because I'm actually practicing for my big blanket. I, I, I want to do an envelope border. But I'm practicing to see what is the best way. My dog's barking. Hopefully somebody will <laughs> tend to his needs. Uh, anyways, but it turned out good. It's, he's just going to use as a dishcloth or a trivet or something like that. And so there's the back. Um, this part, so easy to do. It really, really is easy. There's tons of tutorials out there. Uh, like I said, this part's easy too. Just I didn't like the red peeking through. Um, they all suggest to do a different color because it's hard to see the slip stitches. But I think I might have to try that just to cut, you know, not get that. Anyway, so I did that too. Now, I, the next two objects that I that I made, I'm going to have to show you pictures. Oh, maybe I'll do it on my phone right here. Uh, hold on. Uh, my neighbor was going to a party and she asked me, it was a Monday night uh, or Sunday night, something like that, and she asked me if I could make her a little stuffy that she could attach to the gift. And I'm like, sure, when do you need it by? She goes, Saturday. I'm like, ooh, I wonder. I'm not a very good amigurumi artist. So anyway, so, and she didn't specify what she wanted or how big or anything. So I'm gonna show you the picture that I made and I put it beside my KitchenAid stand mixer so you get the idea. It's bigger than the stand mixer. I found this pattern. I'm gonna show you mine first. There he is. It's for, it was for a little girl. Come on, focus. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to not edit, so, um, come on. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to edit. I'll put a picture here. He came out really, really good. Um, and the pattern that I used was, it was, a, I believe it's a free pattern, and it's for plushy bear. Plushy bear. Mine doesn't look like that because, again, I'm not an amigurumi artist. Um, and um, I did not have any velvet yarn or that plush stuff, so I just used uh, Bernat blanket. So that's why he came out so big. Um, 
But anyway, she loved it. So anyway, I got that done in less than 24 hours. And I thought, oh, I still have time. Let's make her a little one. So she's got a nice decent size one and a little one. And I found this. And anyway, this, this pattern's okay. Um, I, I, I'm not an amigurumi artist, so I don't know if the patterns are any good. I did struggle a little bit with the piecing of the... Um, like the arms are separate. I ended up crocheting them in, like making them and then crocheting them in as you went went. Um, I did have a struggle with with um, so it's all one piece. Uh, so you make one leg and then you make the other and then you attach as you go. I for the life of me couldn't understand what she was saying. So I actually had to, I went into Ravelry and started reading the notes and there was one super kind lady and she wrote out what the instructions were like so that I could understand it and then it made sense. Okay, great. So then I finished it. Um, but yeah, I, I did that. Then I found this pattern and it's really, oh, and by the way, this uh, pattern is Plushy Bear by Dami Gurumi. I'll leave the link for it. This is also a free pattern and it was bunnies because she didn't ask what, what to make. She just said softies. And this guy came out really cute. He was like this small. This is the pattern. Again, free pattern. I'll leave a uh, picture of him here too. I loved him. I thought he turned out so cute. And this was such an easy pattern. Yes, they're sewing, but it wasn't, I don't know why it wasn't as bad. You, you, you're basically... The body is one piece, um, the arms, the ears, and the feet, and the tail were all separate, and you had to sew them on. I didn't find it that difficult, I guess. I don't know. This one I found difficult. This one I didn't, so I don't know. Anyway, did that too, but like I said. So got that done too, and then, I think it was yesterday. Maybe it was the day before. Um, I don't normally watch lives. Uh, I don't watch lives because a lot of the times the host is talking to other people um, and responding and um, I guess I just don't have the patience. I'm usually crocheting and you know like my eyes go up every once in a while so I'm listening. Um, I really don't have the patience for that and a lot of times they're like repeated questions over and over. So I don't have, I don't do, I don't watch lives very often but um, I watched a live from Dory did it now she's got a great little channel I don't know why she's not bigger and she should do more videos she's fabulous she does everything too anyway um, and I clicked on her live and it was a replay of the live and I just let it play and uh, like I said I don't know what possessed me to do it because I don't normally do that but I'm so glad I did because she sews and she's been making these uh, backbone pillows and uh, the, 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 the regular bone, dog bone ones for the neck. Um, but this, I sorry, it's a little mangled because I've already been using it. I've been using it this morning. Anyway, I loved it so much. And now she's selling hers and I would absolutely have bought one. But she's in the States, and the shipping for something like this would have killed me. So I thought, well, I got a sewing machine. I got a room full of fabric. I'll try to make one. And she suggested a bunch of videos online. Uh, and I Googled, or I searched it on YouTube, watched a bunch of videos. Some of the pattern is, uh, some of them are paid for, and some of them are free. I used a free one. I'll leave the link for the video that I used. And you basically print off four, four of these quarter of the bone and here's your here's your template easy uh there was i mean like i said i'm not a seamstress either there the the corners are a little difficult but the rest is so easy and then you stuff it now this one is soft and it's it's i'm using fiber fill my next one i need a little more harder support so the next one which i'll probably make this week i'm gonna make um using old fabric like fabric scraps and yarn to see if I can get it a little harder but I love it I love it so much and she puts a handle so you can travel with it as a matter of fact my mom's traveling next week she said you know I could really use one so <laughs> I'll probably end up giving her this one 
um, if she likes it or she can pick another fabric anyway really e quite easy um, like I said the only the hardest issue was the because you're kind of meeting three three different positions of the fabric here so I think that's just practice anyway I'm so glad I watched that live <laughs> I don't know how many lives I'll watch again, but I'm so glad I watched that one. Thank you, Dory, for the inspiration. And if you don't know who Dory did it, uh, is, I'll leave a link for Dory. You guys can go check her out. She's fabulous. She is really, really great. And you might be able to purchase a, a, a backbone pillow. Anyway, I love it. It's my newest thing. I'm going to make a bunch of them. I'm actually going to try to make one using scrap fabric. Maybe three different panels or, or piece together bits of fabric. Um, and make a scrappy one. Yeah, so I did that. Um, that's all I've had done. I know it's been a while and it doesn't seem like as much, but trust me, weaving in all these ends of the grannies are, is, is time consuming. But I did want to share a little bit of happy mail. Not, it's not happy mail. I purchased this. So, and, and I don't normally show what I buy, but I'm so impressed with this that I wanted to share. So, I was, I search on the internet for all kinds of things and mostly sheep related or farms, Canadian stuff, whatever. And I came across this farm. It's in Northern Canada and they have sheep and they have cattle. Um, anyway, she has decided to, you know, shear her sheep. I don't know if she spins it. I think she sends it to a mill to spin and then she dies or net leaves natural the yarn and she sells the yarn now I there was no place on the website to purchase so I had no idea uh, how to purchase on them okay well I'll just wing it I'll send her an email see what happens so this was a while ago like I don't even want January February whatever and uh, she responded to me she says I would be lo I, I said to her I said just want to try your yarn you're Canadian um, I want to try right and she goes, oh my God, that's so great, whatever, right? But she says, you can buy my stuff at uh, Shabby something or other. I'll leave the link for that store too, but their website is under construction, so you can't buy anything anyway. Anyway, she said she'll send me something, and she goes, what would you like? I said, you know what, surprise me. Make it about $60 worth plus shipping, because I know yarn is expensive, and, and it's, you know, local, handmade, whatever. Local, somewhat local. It's quite a few hours for me. Anyway, a couple months goes by and she go, she I get an email. I didn't even think about it. I forgot. She emails me back. She goes, I'm so sorry. It was lambing season. I completely didn't have time. I said, no problem. Just send me something and I'll, I'll lead transfer you. And I did that. And this is what I got. Okay. The great thing. This is amazing stuff. I know if you're not a wool lover, you're not going to love this. But this is buttery soft. So this is... Um, hold on. Um, Rambouillet. This well, beige one, or this beige one, is Rambouillet. And from what I read, Rambouillet is the merino, Canadian merino. So it is soft. I mean, it's not acrylic soft. Like, let's be realistic. But it's soft, and I'm not allergic. I have no problem. Uh, the cute thing about this is, she sends you a picture of the sheep that it came from. This one is maple. Come on. Why is my camera not focusing? Oh. Anyway. So that one. And then this one is long wool. And this is from midnight. Obviously, it's a natural color. There we go. That's the sheep. I love them. And then she also sent me one that she dyed. Just a little mini as an extra. Oh, my God. I'm so impressed with this. And so, and it, it uh, feels like, I want to say worsted, or very, very, very plump. D this one's definitely worsted. This one's very, very plump DK, or possibly worsted. I think it's worsted. It says three-ply. It says DK weight, but it feels plump. Uh, this one's lopy style, single-ply. I don't know what that is, but it's soft. Anyway, I will leave the link for this farm. It's called Birch Grove Farms. I will leave the link if you want to buy anything send her an email she absolutely is a fantastic lady 
and you get to read up on their farm and their animals and it's just wonderful I love that kind of stuff anyway I will leave the link if you're interested but this is what 60 bucks 60 bucks plus shipping costs which is standard like that's what it costs this is good enough for me to make some winter wear I had to share that they're Canadian and they're fabulous and she's fabulous to work with and you know it's coming straight from the farm anyway that's all I have and what are we at 20 minutes perfect in and out get it done um, anyway I hope everyone is having a wonderful summer I know I am and we will talk soon